Hello, I'm Letitia Clark, your mayor here in Tustin, and this is Mayor Clark's Corner. Thanks for joining me today for the July 2021 update for all things Tustin. Today I'm at the headquarters for the Orange County Fire Authority, and in a moment I'll be speaking with Captain Sean Doran, Public Information Officer with OCFA, to share tips on how to stay cool this summer and the dangers we can face during extreme temperatures. Given the July 4th holiday and closure, the City Council's first meeting of the month will be on July 20th. And on the July 20th agenda, the Council will hold several public hearings. The first is an adoption of a resolution establishing a comprehensive fee schedule. The city recently completed a comprehensive user fee study to de determine the current cost of providing services and to ensure that user fees and charges do not exceed the cost of providing services. Industry best practices recommend that a, a comprehensive review of cost of services and fees be performed every three to five years. And the city's user fees and charges have not been updated since 2008. The council will ho also hold a public hearing to reallocate unspent community development block grant funds, also known as CDBG funds, to the Pine Tree Park Improvements Project at Red Hill and Bryan Avenue to improve the neighborhood park through ADA improvements, restroom fixture replacements, picnic shelter replacements, irrigation upgrades, site furniture replacements, and additional play equipment within the existing play structures. To view the entire city council meeting agenda, watch and participate in the council meetings, or to submit comments, please visit our website or contact the city clerk's office at 714-573-3025. July in Tustin has been busy and we are not slowing down anytime soon. The city of Tustin is currently conducting a residential parking evaluation that will focus on improving the overall parking experience for residents and their guests to address potential adjustments to the preferential permit parking program for residential streets. On July 7th, the city held its first of three virtual residential parking community workshops with our Public Works Department and city consultant, Dixon Resources Unlimited, in order to obtain input from Tustinites on their thoughts on residential parking in their neighborhoods. In conjunction with the residential parking community workshops, Dixon Resources Unlimited is also conducting a survey, which is available now through July 31st. To take the survey, please visit the websites listed below. The next community workshop on residential parking will be held in September and to receive direct mail or emails um, notifications regarding dates and times on how to join in the discussion, please email ksaldivar at tustinca.org or call 714-573-3172. Every eight years, the state of California requires our city to update its housing element and demonstrate that the housing needs of all community members can be met regardless of income. Currently, Tustin's housing element update document is in draft form, available for public review. Comments must be submitted in writing before 5 p.m. on July 30th. To view the draft housing element update and for information on how to submit comments, please visit our website. A community online survey also regarding housing in Tustin has reopened for 30 days from June 30th, 2021 through July 30th, 2021. And the survey was previously available from January 21st through February 28th. We'd like to hear from you and ask that you take a few minutes of your time to complete that short survey. Your responses will help the city better understand our community's housing needs and priorities. Remember both housing, the housing element update comments and housing survey are open until July 30th. For questions or concerns regarding the housing element update or the housing survey, please call 714-573-3127. Although we are near the end of July, concerts in the park are in full swing with the last two scheduled for July 21st and July 28th at 6 p.m. at Pepper Tree Park. Movies in the park continue throughout our great parks on Friday nights, with the last movie scheduled at the Tustin Hangar on August 6th. Registration for the movies at the Hangar is required. For more information on concerts and movies in the park, please visit our website. If you haven't already heard, we have moved the 2021 Tustin Street Fair and Chili Cook-Off to August 15th. Even though this year's event is in a new month, the same great live entertainment, chili competition and vendors are back in Old Town to help us close out the summer. And I hope to see you all there. It's now my pleasure to introduce Captain Sean Dorn with the Orange County Fire Authority. 
Welcome, Captain. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Mary Clark. It's my pleasure to be here today to talk about the dangers of high heat and also share some helpful tips for everyone. Awesome. Well, you know, it's been really warm um, this summer and you mentioned extreme heat. What do you exactly mean by extreme? Well, extreme heat is a period of high heat and humidity with temperatures above 90 degrees for at least two to three days. In extreme heat, your body works extra hard to maintain its normal body temperature, which can lead to death. In fact, extreme temperature related deaths are among the highest in the entire country in terms of uh, weather related incidents. Oh, wow. So should there be particular groups that we should be concerned about that are particularly vulnerable here in Tustin? Absolutely. Extreme heat can come quickly and without much warning. However, older adults, children, anybody sick, overweight, underlying health conditions are definitely at a greater risk for extreme heat. Remember, the humidity increases the feeling of heat as measured by the heat index. That's interesting too. So as the public, what can we do to prepare for this extreme heat? Well, as we talked about a little bit, extreme heat can occur quickly and without warning. So the public should do some things ahead of time to harden their homes. Cover windows that receive morning or afternoon sun with shades, blinds, louvers, outside umbrellas, even cardboard wrapped in aluminum foil to deflect that heat. That can deflect as much as 80% of the heat intake into the home. Mm -hmm. When it comes to doors and window windows, get them weather stripped and properly insulated. Add more insulation throughout the house to keep the heat out. Consider using a attic fan or battery powered ventilator or power back ventilator through the attic to exhaust those hot gases and heat outside the attic. Consider installing air conditioning in the windows and make sure you properly insulate around those. And finally, learn to recognize the symptoms and signs of heat stress. So there's quite a few things that we can do. Those are all great tips in preparing us for this extreme heat that we can expect. Uh, what should our community uh, do to be safe during the extreme heat wave particularly? All righty. So when the heat wave comes, we encourage you to find places in your local community where you can go to find cool, such as local malls and libraries. Avoid strenuous activities. Wear light clothing. If you're going to do activities, do them in the early morning hours. Stay hydrated. Check on your family members and your neighbors. Take care of each other. Drink plenty of fluids. Watch out for heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. And of course, never, ever leave people or animals inside a closed car. Good to know, all really good tips again. And you mentioned finding places with air conditioning. Um, and I'd like to add that when temperatures uh, sustain 95 degrees or higher, we actually have the Tustin Area Senior Center as a respite area for our seniors and our vulnerable uh, from the heat. And any residents seeking uh, that refuge can go to the Senior Center regardless of their age, so. That's a fantastic resource for all the citizens of Tustin. In addition, we like to remind people they can check out OCGov and 211 OC or a phone call at 211 during those high heat periods. Uh, in addition, I'd like to remind the public to call 911 whenever someone is experiencing signs of heat related illness, such as heat stroke. Those signs can include the following. Extremely high body temperature. We're talking 103 and above when taken orally. Um, red, hot, dry skin. This is the absence of sweating. That's a big indicator for us. A rapid, strong, bounding pulse. And of course, dizziness, confusion, any level of unresponsiveness. For more information about that, the public can always visit us at ocfa.org. Well, you all are always a wonderful resource and we live in Southern California, but there are some risks to living in this heat as well. So I hope that we can all take this into consideration and put into practice this important information you shared today. So to avoid the heat related um, illnesses and just to be safe uh, this summer during the heat, we thank you so much, Captain. And um, I'd like to thank you for your time today. Thank you, Mary Clark. On behalf of the Orange County Fire Authority, thank you very much for having us here today. Thank you. This concludes Mayor Clark's Corner for July 2021. Visit our website to sign up for updates, view our dedicated COVID-19 page, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions, please feel free to reach out to me directly at lclark at I thank you for your time today. See you next time at Mayor Clark's Corner.